Belgium 2, Romania 0. And the Red Devils are finally, finally, finally on the board. They get their first points, the first three points of the tournament. And they move up to second place behind Romania in Group E. Where are they behind Romania? They just beat Romania. Um, superior goal difference, maybe. Oh, goal scored. They're up on goal scored. Their goal difference is 1-1. But Romania has scored three this tournament. And uh, Belgium have scored two. So, yeah, I think that's how they're on top. Uh, Belgium also move on top of Slovakia on goal difference. But Slovakia beat them. So, I don't know. Weird. But, yeah, before we start, guys, the revolution shall be televised. <laughs> Belgium 2, Romania nil. This game was a potential banana skin for the Red Devils, but they have managed to pull it off thanks to Tillemans and <laughs> Tillemans scored in the first two minutes of the game. Before we get into the game, guys, the revolution shall be televised. If you are in Kenya, if you are Kenyan, you know what's happening. Don't keep quiet. This one affects all of us. So, make sure your voice is heard. So, yeah, Belgium 2-0. This is a very good performance. Um, starting off, they had Ben Strossard, which I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't. I don't know why they did it. But upon watching them play, I got it. Like I got it. Having Luke Bakio and uh, Doku in the on the field was actually quite quite solid, right? Um, they needed pace. They needed pace. They needed to make this Romania team run backwards. One of the main reasons is that Romania has Ratiu. If you guys know who Ratiu is. He's the right back for Romania. Fastest. He recorded the second fastest time in La Liga, only behind Vini Jr. So you have to make that guy work defensively. He can't just be having an easy time attacking. So they normally let him attack so much, and then the two uh, midfielders sort of cover for him. That is uh, Razvan Marin and mm, the other Marin. I forget his name. Uh, ma, 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 as this thing loads. So yeah, there's Razvan Marin and Marius Marin, who really cover well in midfield. Stanchu as well, but Stanchu is given more of the job of attacking. So, um, and Dennis Mann is their right winger. Really, really good uh, player. So, Romania, they won their first game 3-0, as we said. And in qualifying, they only conceded five goals. So, this is a team that doesn't concede many. So, it was very important and crucial that Belgium started this game off quickly. And quickly they did. They were just on them like a rush. Again, as I said, Tillemann scored after one minute and I think 30 seconds or something like that, or 30 something seconds. But that all came from, it stemmed from Tillemann's applying pressure in midfield. He was brought into the game, but he was given more of a free role to actually attack um, and uh, press higher. If you guys know, Tillemann's is not the greatest uh, player at tracking back. He is he's very good going forward on the ball, but when it comes to defensive transition specifically, I feel like that's probably his weakest point. So just giving him the cover of Onana, and then Theat started. Vertonghen also started this game, which was a bit of a shock to me. Votvas is someone I, guys, I, I don't know. I don't reach this guy, but anyway, he played, and I, I think he was. He had a few mistakes in him, but he was okay. So yeah, Tillemans wins the ball in midfield, um, and then as he's falling down, sort of taps it to Lukaku. Lukaku gives it to Doku. Doku's holder play was really good. Like his holder play is. Lukaku does the holder play of like holding players. Doku's holder play is you, me, him looking at you while he has the ball at his feet because you know he can go in any direction and you will not catch him. What that does for the team is that it just buys a bit more time for people to get into positions. People start making runs and stuff. And yeah, Lukaku runs to the middle of the of the D. He had another disallowed goal today, but one thing that he did quite well is the hold up inside the D. So he holds the, he holds the defender. He kind of just takes one touch, turns around, lays it off to Tillemans who like strikes the ball on the half volley, falling down straight to the corner or just under the goal, to the right of the goalkeeper into the corner-ish and makes it 1-0. And that was exactly what Belgium needed, just to calm their nerves, number one, and number two, just to show that this defense can be beaten. The thing with Romania is they grow in confidence as the game goes. If the game stays 0-0 or if they're up 1-0 or 2-0, it's very hard to score against them. So that was a crucial, crucial uh, time to score. Then Romania had chances of their own, especially Dennis Mann, who for me was man of the match in the first game against uh, Ukraine. Um, he had a few chances that actually were saved. Uh, someone else had a really good save that the keeper saved um, from Romania. In the 18th minute, Luke Bakio as well had a very good chance. Luke Bakio, I believe, 
and this time he was coming from the left side. He started, he started on the right, on the no, he was on the left, but Doku went and joined him on that side. So Doku ha- was sort of given a free role to like just attack from any place that you found. Doku was amazing in this game. So the three people who were my standout players were Doku, Lukaku, and obviously KDB. KDB had shots from outside the box, a lot of them. I believe that's just one of the game plans that they, part of their game plan that they wanted to implement today. Sort of like Spain, where it's like, if you get that chance to shoot from outside, we'll shoot it. But let it be someone who can actually shoot and score, right? So when KDB shoots, it's, it's a high percentage shot or higher percentage shot as compared to other players, right? Just because it's very accurate from shooting from outside. So, yeah, <clears throat> KDB had a number of shots from outside the box, to be honest. Someone who disappointed me was Onana. Onana gave the ball away two times, and both of them led to shots. Uh, the first one, he gave away, then he's the one who ran all the way back with his long legs and actually tried to put a challenge in, and the ball just went over the bar. Then the second one <coughs> led to a shot that the keeper saved. <coughs> And I just think he was he was he was a bit sloppy tonight in in midfield. And if they find a better team and he plays like that, it's going to be a bit costly. He just needs to be a bit more sure on the ball. And it's also upon the coach to make sure that in that position when he has the ball, he has to play like into an open. There needs to be people opening up for him. There needs to be options, right? Whenever you're in midfield, and as a coach, you sh- you're like you're, you should train certain scenarios, and that's one of them that Onana should be training. Because I think at um, at Everton, it's Idrissa Ghana Gay who does more of that work. So he, the, the onus is not on him. His job is just to be a box-to-box midfielder. But in such a team with Tillemans, he has to do that job, you know. So one thing is that if you're going to play defensive midfielder, you have to be very sure. Because I in I believe, in my opinion, it's like the second worst place to lose the ball after goalkeeper. Obviously, goalkeeper loses the ball. It's more or less a shot on target or a goal. Defensive mid loses the ball. It's more or less a run straight to your, at your keeper because more than likely you've spread out, you know, because you're attacking. So you're really open. So, yeah, Onana really needs to sort that out um, in the middle of the park. Other than that, I I feel like his, his physicality was really good. It was needed. Aerial duels as well. He, he has a presence and he has a motor. Like, the boy can run all day. So there's things that work in his favor. There's things that he just needs to polish up. Um, again, as we said earlier, Lukaku denied by VR again. It was a ball by KDB, and Lukaku actually the finish was really, really good. I was quite surprised by Lukaku's finishing. Um, and yeah, as they're celebrating there, whatever, then I think the flag was raised. They go to VR again, automated offside decision comes even before you finish celebrating. You know, the replay is still being shown, decision is already in. So kudos to that. And then, um, in the 68th minute. Man had a chance. Uh, I think that's the one where Onana gave the ball away. It was a one-on-one, and uh, the Belgian goalkeeper Castells Castells did well to save with like the top of his of his the top of his thigh, right? Like his left thigh. He was, made himself big, put his leg up, and blocked the ball. And that was a crucial save because at that point, if they score and make it one-one, it becomes very difficult because Belgium had really been knocking on the door and they were not getting that breakthrough. Then, obviously, in the 80th minute, Castells again with the long ball over the top towards Lukaku. Lukaku sort of pressures the defender. The defender jumps up. I think he touches it or flicks it, but Lukaku doesn't. So the ball just goes straight to KDB. KDB is on on goal and then just fall, like as he's falling, finishes and pass the keeper to make it 2 0. And that was that. KDB sealed the deal. Captain leading from the front, really good today. Um, Lukaku was really, really good. As I've said, his hold-up play was really nice. There's a chance where Doku had the ball on the wing, then he passes to him in the D. He just uses his strength to just shield the ball, but because he's so strong, the defender just has to fall down. But now the lukaku in him comes out, where he turns to shoot with his right, but he turns like a trailer. By the time he's shooting, the other defender has come and blocked the ball. But he did he did very good things. I believe they are, this team, the best way for them to play still is with Lukaku. Like, that is that is a no-brainer. Like, Lukaku has to be in this game. Uh, what we were saying about Lois Sopenda, yeah, we, we, do, we don't know anything. Myself and Keenan. Keenan, I'm putting you in this category. You don't know anything. But, yeah, I was quite impressed by Lukaku today. So, yeah, the game ends 2-0. Belgium are now in, um, in second spot, as I said earlier, just above Slovakia. Um, above Ukraine. Actually, everyone in this group has three points. That is fascinating. Um, I don't know why Slovakia are behind Belgium, to be honest, because they beat them. 
um in the head to head but anyway belgium have more points uh, have more uh, goals because they've scored uh, actually no they're tied on goals if you think about it because slovakia scored one against belgium to make it 1-0 and then slovakia lost to ukraine but they scored one as well um but they conceded two belgium have conceded one so that's where the goal difference comes to one Romania at the top after their 3-0 win in their first game. So now Romania will play Slovakia in their last game and then Belgium will play Ukraine. Anyone from this group can still qualify. So this this is now turning out to be the group of death as after saying it was group B. Uh but yeah, it's the most entertaining group. And yeah, that's an evening for us. This was day 9 of the Euros. We've covered every single game. Every so far from tomorrow we now get into the last games of the group which means everyone is playing um at the same time so tomorrow there's two games there's germany versus uh switzerland and then scotland versus uh who's the other team that's playing tomorrow versus hungary and yeah those two will be played at will be played at the same time at 10 p.m. so yeah i don't think we'll do a live for that because tomorrow we will be at the junction doing f1 we'll be showcasing f1 all of you guys are welcome come through Uh, from 2 p.m. we are showing the Spain GP and yeah peace